And isn't it a little bit ironic that the violin has something called a bass bar? It has the word bass in it. How can a bass bar be in a violin? That's just not right. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Ask All After the Violin Maker. So today I'm going to talk a little bit more about how the string instruments of the violin family work. So I've talked a little bit about the sound post that sits inside the instrument, but today I'm going to talk a little bit about the bass bar. So it sits on the bass side of the instrument. So the bridge is here and it's on the other side and you can see one right here. This one's a little bit broken, but let's go over to my workshop and I'll tell you a little bit more. Okay, so every violin, viola, cello has a bass bar. They sit uh, just here. Some of these aren't totally correct. So here's another one on a different instrument. So this is an old instrument, probably 150 or so years old. And the whole idea uh, firstly is because you've got like the 27 kilos of weight from the bridge down onto the top plate. So on the treble side you have the sound post which uh, looks a bit like this supporting the treble side. You know, you, so you have all the weight of the bridge coming down onto the instrument from above here. And on the treble side you have the sound post supporting the 27 kilos of weight that comes down. But on the bass side, there's not that kind of support. So uh, there is the bass bar. So one of the functions of the bass bar is to, to strengthen the top plate so it doesn't actually collapse under the weight of the bridge. But the other more important function is a sound function. And it is to project the vibrations from the middle here onto the top and the bottom of the instrument so it projects the vibrations to either end and today i'm actually going to make a new bass bar so i have this top plate that i'm currently working on uh, it's an old uh, violin possibly french and i have this bit of bass bar and uh and that i'll be putting that into um into the top plate here so the first thing I have to do is I actually have to mark out where the bass bar has to go. And I also have to thickness and adjust the length of the raw bass bar. Now this bass bar project is actually going to be like I'm going to do that over a few days. So you're probably going to see changes of t-shirts and things like that unless you want me to wear the same t-shirt for three days. So the first thing I have to do is I have to measure out exactly where the base bar is going to go. And it's a kind of a proportional thing. So it, it needs to run from the inside slightly further to the outside of the top plate. First measurement I'm going to do is to find the exact middle of the instrument. Okay. So next, I do a little division, and it's sort of a proportion of the entire width that the, um, it's about one-seventh of the width of the half that the um, base bar sits. I've marked in these two marks, so that is the middle of the top plate, and then here is the mark where I'm going to fit the actual base bar. I do the same on the other side got my two lines here one here one here and then just gonna mark out the middle and then I have my location where to fit the base bar I've already done a rough cut of this I've sort of marked it off I'm gonna fit this a bit closer you can see there's some pretty big gaps just here and here so the goal is that when it fits to the top plate there should be absolutely zero gaps all the way along so it fits a hundred percent and by fitting a hundred percent uh firstly it stays glue but it has this really good connection to the rest of the top plate and that's when it's going to really fulfill its function so my next step is i'm going to use some chalk 
to uh, to do some finer fitting. Uh, like I'll still rough fit, but I'm going to use some chalk just to give me some indicators where it fits already. And then I'm going to glue down some little guides so that each time I fit the base bar, I fit it into the same spot. So they're going to be these little bits of guiding timber I'll, I'll glue down shortly. Okay, so I look at uh, where there's chalk marks here. And at the moment I'm working fairly roughly still, so we're a long way of fine fitting. Before I get to the fine fitting, I'm going to glue these cleats down so that I always put this base bar down the same way each time. So I'm just trying to get a rough shape happening at the moment. There's still some pretty big gaps just here. So I'm just going to mark these and make sure I don't accidentally take off. Yeah, we're still not there. Okay, so now I'm happy to just uh, glue down these fitting guides. I've actually got to fine fit these two. The following morning and I left the little guides to dry so I've got to take the clamps off now. So now the base bar is going to stay in the same position as I fit it, um, you know, with these little guides here. So I'm going to do some still rough if fitting, but a bit finer fitting now. And I chalk fit, so I basically use chalk to mark the places where um, we need to cut. And you can actually see the places like this chalk uh, just here. These are the places where the base bar already fits now, but you want everything else to fit. So I'm going to keep, um, you know, slowly whittling away. I've been fitting this base bar for a little while now, and we are actually getting close. Have a look at that. So I'm, I'm onto the finer fitting now. So I'm using a file. Yeah, this is getting very close to fitting. So I have to fit a little bit more with the file and then I'm gonna get all my gluing gear ready and glue the base bar. So I need a lot of clamps for that and the glue has to be fresh and nice and hot and the base bar has to fit perfectly. And I use a lot of clamps, you'll see. It's gonna be a lot of clamps. Okay, so I've done a bit more fitting, so I'm just gonna get all my bits and pieces ready for gluing. The glue is on and hot. The base bar is fitting, so I need to just um, brush all the dust off. <coughs> okay, that's here, it's all ready to go. I have lots of clamps that I'm going to use. I will actually cut the top of the base bar down a little bit because I actually use that timber for repairs. Just going to give this a very rough um, finish up here. There we go. So we've got the rough shape sorted and uh, okay, so I've got everything ready. I've got my pile of clamps here and there. I have my glue already over there. It's the moment of truth, so gluing time. So the glue I use is like the type of glue they've literally used for thousands of years. Yes, that kind of glue has been used in ancient Egypt. And uh, even, you know, some of the old 300 plus year old violins are still holding together in places. So this stuff works. Got my little clamping block to make sure it's actually an old rib, which I'm going to put on the other side here underneath to make sure that the top plate doesn't get any dents while I'm doing that. And then it is time to start gluing. I'm just going to make sure I have the first few clamps all ready to go. Once I've got the glue on, it's got to all happen really fast because um, once the glue cools down, it actually turns to jelly, which is not what we want. Okay, here we go. So I've 
put the glue on the entire base bar. Now I am putting the glue on the area where the base bar is going to go. A bit more glue on the base bar just to make sure. And we are ready to go. Definitely want to get this the right way around. Okay, so first things first, put on the first clamp. I work from the middle outwards usually. See what I mean by putting a lot of clamps on? There we go. And we have one more clamp. This looks pretty impressive, don't you think? Plenty of clamps on here. And I'm going to leave that dry overnight. And then tomorrow um, I'll take the clamps off and then I'll do the final cut of the base bar, sort of tap the plate, make sure it's all tuned properly and works well, and then I can close the violin. So it's pretty exciting. Okay, so it's the next morning and um, this is dried overnight, so it's all ready for me to take the clamps off. Okay. Fabulous. Okay, so that's all glued and dried. My next step is going to be to first to remove these little blocks and also to start, yeah, just, just shaping the base bar to the correct shape, make sure it has the right height. Uh, also very important that the flexibility of the plate works well and that the base bar basically fulfills its function of um, <coughs> firstly supporting the base side of the instrument, but also transferring some of the vibrations to the ends of the instrument, of the plate. <coughs> Just making sure that none of the actual timber on the top plate splits while I do this. Okay. So I'm going to measure out the length first, like how long um, the base bar has to be on each end. And uh, then I will start shaping it. So now that I've marked the ends, I'll be able to shape, uh, create the shape of the whole base bar now that this top plate's slightly softer, so I'm actually going to do the base bar just a tiny bit higher than normal. Okay, so that's, uh, I'm fairly, I'm happy with the shape now, I'm going to round it off. Okay, now it's just time to cut the, uh, to cut the base bar to length. Okay, let's just do the other side. I've got to be super careful here that I don't accidentally cut um, into the top plate. So the very rest I actually have to soak off because uh, I don't want to damage the top plate. Alrighty, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to soak these areas with water to uh, just the ends here and this end, it's cold water. And then also where I had glued those um, blocks. Then I'm going to, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to wash it off with hot water. And then the base bar is pretty much finished. Okay, I'm just going to use some hot water to, to wash all the glue off around the outside. And hopefully these end bits have soaked enough to come off as well. Yep, that came off all right. Hopefully the other one will come off all right too. That's a great thing about the glue that I use. It's like I said, it's 5,000 year old glue. Uh, it's a gelatin based glue, but it'll basically you can soak it um, 
cold and then hot and you can take it off again which which is great when you're working on antique instruments because you can soak the glue off without doing any damage to the wood all soaked off and now I've just got to let this dry then I'll do a tiny bit more finishing off and then it's done okay so the base bar is finished I am super happy with it I had to adjust it very slightly here at the at the F hole uh, be, because the F hole is a little bit too far towards the center um, and you know I don't compromise on the bass bar because it'll affect the sound badly. So the bass bar you can see it sits underneath the bass side. If you look at an instrument it sits underneath the bridge on the bass side. So the strings vibrate they vibrate the bridge, the bridge vibrates the top, so the top starts moving and that moves the base bar, so the top plate's moving, it moves the base bar, the base bar starts moving this way and uh, so it sets off the ends of the top plate and creates that unique violin sound. So it does that as well as strengthening the underside of the or the bass side of the top plate. That's how a bass bar works and how you make a bass bar. Anyway, if you like this video, click the like button, leave me a comment and uh, subscribe so you always find out when my next video comes out and uh, Click on the little bell as well, that way you find out straight away. Thanks for watching guys, keep making beautiful music, see ya!